over here, the Burke County Sheriff's Office and GSP are investigating a deadly vehicle crash that happened this morning. According to the Burke County Sheriff's Office, the accident happened on Highway 25 South and Idlewood Road around 7 a.m. The coroner says a 23-year-old woman from Augusta died in the crash. Her name has not yet been released. And Florida's Republican Party rolled out the red carpet today for the candidates vying to be the Republican presidential candidate next year. The hopefuls gathered in Kissimmee, Florida, to officially register to be on the state's primary ballot. Tim Scott spoke there as well. I'm in this race for a very simple reason. We need a forward-looking, optimistic, conservative warrior who can unite our party, beat Joe Biden in a landslide and save America. Trump and others spoke as well, except Nikki Haley as she was dealing with a family matter. The South Aiken High School's volleyball team won the state 4A region championship this evening against North Myrtle Beach. Lissa Lyons was there for the victory. Some things are just worth waiting for. South Aiken volleyball came in this season as number one. Tonight, they get to leave as number one. For a crowd that was cheering all night, they let the sign do the talking. With her 27th kill of the night, Annie Dizikowski seals the deal for the T-Breds, bringing home their first ever state title in volleyball. Oh, I wasn't even like thinking. I was just like, come on, one more, one more, one more. That's all we need. And then we've got this. Just went up and swung and I was and just, it, it works. Oh, I, I, I can actually breathe now. It's like the first time in a while I can breathe. Honestly, it's been like a dream. Like since like last November, it's been such like a big thing we've all wanted like so badly and we've just been working so hardly for it. So honestly, the fact that it actually happened and we got it done, it's just, it's just amazing for all of us. The last time these two teams met, it didn't swing in South Aiken's favor. They lost two straight sets against the Chiefs in September. This meeting, they didn't make it easy. The Chiefs took set one, 30 to 28. I said, you know, win or lose, go down with a fight. If you're going to get beaten, get beaten, but don't beat yourself. And, you know, they battled point for point. The Debrats took the next three, leading as much as seven in the second. The energy from the floor to the bench to the crowd was all gas, no breaks. I'm never going to forget this group of girls. They're, they're so amazing. I mean, we're such a strong team, we're a complete team. I mean, we're set in every single position, and that's really what brought us the win today, and that's what I'm going to remember, is this team. Marking this team forever in the history books in South Aiken. Reporting from Columbia, Alyssa Lyons, on your side. All righty, well, coming up after the break, the Augusta Comic Con came at the end of the Halloween week. Many people donned their costumes and showed up. The sights and sounds, next. It was four days, and he... Well, it was a week for costumes from Halloween to Comic-Con at the Hilton Doubletree Hotel in Augusta. Over 100 vendors showed up to the event that featured video game tournaments, cosplay contests, and a general time for fans to gather together. Actors, comic book writers, and others gathered for the event as well, including Nakia Barise, otherwise known for her role as Tanya Sloan in Power Rangers CO that aired in 1996. Two people there spoke about what makes the event nice for them. I think it's a great place for people to come out and show their passions and hobbies and dress up and not be in an environment where it's weird. So it's nice to see people, you know, come into the community and see all the good stuff all the time. It ran from 10 in the morning to 5 in the afternoon and looked like a lot of fun there with all the awesome costumes and gear. Also today was the Augusta Buddy Walk helping fundraise for Upside of Downs. Over at Evanstown Center Park, the walk this morning went from 9 a.m. to noon. People can donate to Upside of Down at their website as well if they are interested in donating to the nonprofit. Now, the program Betty's for Vets, which was founded in Charleston, South Carolina in 2021 by Marine veteran Jason Doors, made the trip to Augusta to surprise one of our local veterans. The convoy of Corvettes lined up outside the home of Stephen Farrington this morning as veterans and organizers gathered as well. Along with surprising him with one of their cars, they also presented him with a check to help keep up with any of the keep up bills on that vehicle and any outstanding bills he may have had. Well, we're not sure what color his car was, but there the group will go to 
Charleston next week for a car show. And over at Evans High School, Columbia County hosted their special needs resource event. Parents were able to walk through the education resource fair and meet with over 26 vendors. It was aimed at helping connect parents of kids with special needs to resources that they may not be aware of with emotional support, speech, language, and other things that may be needed. Well, if you have a parent that's in this school system, you can contact any one of our schools. Each school has a sped specialist that's involved. Um, you can contact any one of them. You can contact the Columbia County Board of Education. Maxine Taylor went on to include that the resources extended to sports as well as with the Special Olympics taking place in the next spring. Well, deer was not on the menu at this restaurant, but this doe had other dinner plans. How she got in, coming up next on News 12 at 11. Whether you need a fill-up... Trust meteorologist Emily Acton for your first alert. A restaurant in Virginia had a big cleanup on their hands after an unexpected customer dined in earlier this week. A deer crashed through a glass door at the restaurant Wednesday and ran through its dining room and kitchen, and it was all caught on camera. Duke Carter spoke to the people who were there, and they say this is something they will never forget. Oh, dear. A dough bustling through awful authors a little after 10 Wednesday evening had everyone in a frenzy. Oh, that baby! Well, I started talking to the bartender. Phoenix St. Clair was in the process of relaxing with co-workers and have an adult beverage when... All of a sudden, I hear somebody yell out, there's a deer in here. And we all are like, what? You heard that right, folks. Bam! <gasps> Check out this security video from seconds earlier. The dope busted through the front door of awful authors in Salem gathered itself and started running, looking for an exit. And in this case, the nearest exit was through some people. Everyone just kind of goes in shock mode. So I kind of stood to the side because I was nervous. I was, I was not trying to be in the line of fire of <laughs> the deer running out. And I heard a big, loud bang. It resembled a gunshot, but I wasn't certain. Christina Twine, who works at Awful Authors, was eating dinner when she saw the dope. So I turned around and looked at the person sitting in the hallway and he looked at me with wide eyes and said, it's a deer. It was probably between 30 and 45 seconds. It, it all went down very quickly. The dough makes its way through the restaurant, near the pool table, and eventually out the door. And get this, we're told no humans were hurt despite the damage to the front door. When we came up front and saw glass shattered, and then the protrusion of the door, we were a little shocked. Shocked that some really needed that adult beverage before going home. Honestly, we all just said, okay, well, let's take a shot and we're going to go home because that was enough for us. <laughs> like... The glass door has already been replaced and the staff say they hope it's deer resistant. I mean, I've heard of, you know, deer cotton headlights, but this is, uh, this is a whole other thing, uh, trying to catch in on those, I guess, adult beverages over there at the restaurant. I mean, we have plenty of deer in Virginia. I don't know why. Getting into the restaurant so key. It's a, well, this is weird because I saw that this was coming up. I knew the story was coming up. And I saw a completely different story maybe last week of a deer going through a restaurant there. So maybe they just are just maybe trying to make friends. Maybe weather coming up here, you know? Okay. They're trying to get inside, you know? Maybe. Maybe. That's a, that's a good thing. Um, well, it's a good thing that it's getting cold. Not a good thing that they're trying to go inside. But... Chili Star 2, our Sunday. Uh, it's going to be one of the last days that we'll see the 30s, at least for a little while. I think uh, we might still see those upper 30s in some spots come early Monday morning, but then we're going to be warming up. So a big warm up for us by the end of the week. We can see the 80s, but it's going to be dry throughout the week. So not expecting any rainfall. Things are looking um, on the calmer side in terms of rainfall right now. Sitting in those lower 40s but going to cool off into those 30s. But let's check out the rest of the nation. I thought this was super interesting. We're 41 right now. Check out Omaha, Nebraska, 45. Denver, Colorado, 47. So we are cooler than those spots over there. Not going to last too long, though. Once we go throughout the day, or throughout the days, throughout the week, I should say, we're going to have this ridge of high pressure staying up over our area and so that's gonna keep us dry but also warmer we can expect to see the 80s again we were not done with the 80s thought we were going to be got wrong so 
for sale in November, seeing the 80s, but hey, daylight saving time ends tonight. Got to set your clocks back, check your smoke alarms, but this is the big one, sunset, Craig, 532 tomorrow. Sunrise, though, it's going to be at 651, so maybe there's a, a trade-off there, but yeah, we're going to be warming up big time this week, going to see the 80s, Wednesday, Thursday, maybe even Friday, but small chance of showers overnight Friday into Saturday. Definitely loving the extra sleep, but the cold temperatures can be something else. Thanks for the heads up, Emily. And as we head into break, here's a live look at Sacramento and your winning lotto numbers. Struggling with the highs and lows. Trust meteorologist Chris Still for your first alert. First Alert Radar, powered by Jim Hudson Automotive Group. On your sideline, sports brought to you by the Hawk Law Group. According to the college football playoff rankings, the two-time defending national champions aren't the best team in the country. The number two ranked dogs had the opportunity to prove themselves to the committee tonight with a top 15 ranked SEC matchup against number 12 Missouri, a team that gave the dogs some problems last season. The Tigers made this one another grinded out type of game, but this time it was between the hedges. Both of these teams found the end zone in the first half. This Carson Beck touchdown pass helped Dominic Lovett score against his old team. The game was tied at 10 points apiece heading into the half. Georgia didn't have a lot of success running the ball in the first half, but that changed in quarter number three when Kendall Milton powered his way in for the touchdown, putting the dogs on top 17 to 13. That score riled up the fans, and they'd be happy about this one too. With Brock Bowers out, Oscar Delp has really stepped up as a receiver, and you know that touchdown had to feel good. To be able to put points on the board in a game like this, and uh... Just, just make play with your numbers called. Uh, it, was, it was a good feeling. Carson threw a perfect ball right where the defender couldn't get it. Uh, everything just started start the line in that play. But this one was far from over. In the fourth, the Tigers handed off to Cody Schrader. This long touchdown run brought him to over 100 yards on the day. And right after that, Missouri went for two, and they got it courtesy of Brady Cook bringing the Tigers within three, 24 to 21. The play of the game undoubtedly came from Nazir Stackhouse, who intercepts this pass by Cook and almost takes it back to the house on the return, exciting everyone in the stadium. Sanford was going nuts after that play. That massive turnover from the big man helped put this game to bed and solidify Georgia's victory, 30 to 21. We told him after the game we had to get a piano off his back because he, uh, he said he took out, and he just knew he was going to score, and he didn't realize how far he had to run, and he was, <laughs> he was out of breath about halfway. I think on both sides of the ball, we played really well and very physical, and I think that's just what it comes down to in the SEC, you know, tough physical games, and we ended up coming out on top. I think we knew going into it that it was a problem to be a 12-round fight just because of how talented they are and how well they execute on both sides. Um, but ultimately, I think this is a great test for us. Next Saturday, the Dogs will be looking to extend their winning streak to 27 games when they take on Ole Miss right here at Sanford Stadium. In addition to the hype surrounding another matchup between two highly ranked SEC teams, ESPN's College Game Day will be here in Athens, shining a giant spotlight on the Dogs as their quest for a three-peat continues. Reporting from Between the Hedges in Athens, Dan Booth on your side. And it was quite the day for ranked teams in our area. We told you about Georgia holding off Missouri, but Clemson got the win over 15th ranked Notre Dame, putting Dabo Sweeney up to 166 wins, the most in Clemson football history for the head coach. Unfortunately, Richard's Georgia Southern Eagles fell to the Texas State Bobcats. South Carolina picked up the win. Coastal Carolina won a close one against Old Dominion, and Georgia Tech won its second game in a row. And my JMU Dukes, 9-0, beat Georgia State. How about that, Emily? All right. Thanks, Craig. Uh, didn't have any measurable rainfall today. Not looking like it tomorrow either, but I'll have another look at your seven day coming up after the break. Shakes all day at Sonic. Don't forget to set your clocks back tonight. 
Tomorrow will warm up into those middle 70s, mostly sunny throughout the day. Same story come Monday, Tuesday a little bit warmer, and this is actually going to be above average. Normally we're right around 73, 74 this time of year, so we're going to be above average this week. I mean, check out the 80s. They are back come Wednesday, Thursday, maybe even Friday as well, depending on uh, the cloud cover there. Could see a shower move through overnight Friday into early Saturday morning, but low chance at that, and it's so far out. I just wanted to mention it, didn't even put it on the seven day, but we'll cool back down a little bit for our Saturday next week. Overnight lows ranging from those 30s, and then we'll warm up into the low 50s by the end of the week, Craig. Loving the extra sleep and the heads up. Thanks for that, Emily, and thanks for sticking around tonight. I'm Craig Allison, but if you're up, we are back at 6 a.m. Live from Augusta. We're watching News 1226 at 11. Well, the Foodies Festival made its Augusta debut this weekend, though an unexpected fire broke out on its last day at one of the food trucks. Oh my God. Organizers said the fire burned the food truck to the ground, and a bystander was there. Spoke about the moment it happened earlier this evening. So from there, he was saying that the fire didn't spread much, and the Foodies Festival organizers said in a statement that no one was injured and that other vendors were looking to help the owner of the food truck. On a happy note, that several of the vendors have come together and are starting to go fund me to help the gentleman on his food truck. Now, that one, Kennedy, continued on to say that another vendor, nothing fancy, is donating one of their old trailers so that the vendor who lost their truck can stay in business. They say fire crews responded quickly and were able to contain that fire. First things first, we're going to toss things over. First learn meteorologist Emily Acton. What can we expect for the work week coming up and election season? People outside. Yeah, uh, it's actually not going to be too bad, Craig. Overnight tonight, we're going to cool off into the low 40s. Some spots could see the upper 30s. Right now, we're sitting in the mid 40s. Still low 50s in some areas. But again, uh, things are going to be calm for the majority of our work week. Now, if we go hour by hour overnight tonight, we can expect those temperatures, again, to drop off to right around 40. But we'll rebound quickly. The sun will rise at 6.50 now. So a little bit earlier uh, to get your morning started. And so that means that we'll warm up a little bit quicker. We can expect to see high temperatures around 3 p.m. instead of 4 p.m. now. Overnight lows are going to hit right around 6 or 7 instead of 8. So a little bit of a difference there. But nonetheless, we're still going to see uh, great sky conditions for the start of our work week. Sunny skies warm up into those middle 70s. But Craig, we're going to see the 80s again before this week is said and done. And I'll take a look at that coming up soon. All right, thanks for the heads up, Emily. Well, officers from Richmond County responded to a shooting in South Augusta on Goldfinch Drive. Officials say shots were fired and deputies arrived to find one man shot with at least one gunshot wound. He's at the hospital being treated for his injuries. The name, nor any suspects in this case, have been released yet, but we'll continue to follow this as it develops. Now, the Aiken County Coroner's Office is investigating a motorcycle crash on I-20 that left one person dead. Officials identified the motorcyclist as 61-year-old Timothy Arrell from this morning's crash near mile marker 22 on I-20 East. South Carolina Highway Patrol says the driver went off the left side of the roadway and into the median before being taken to the Aiken Regional Medical Center, where Arrell later died. And one of the three victims of the mass shooting in Lewis and Maine has been upgraded from critical to stable condition. All three patients being treated at the hospital in Maine are now in stable condition. And the Central Maine Medical Center assembled a team of more than a dozen surgeons and more than 100 other healthcare professionals on the night of the shootings. The gunman, Robert Card, an Army reservist, killed 18 people and wounded 13 more. He was later found with a self-inflicted gunshot wound.
and Tyson Foods is voluntarily recalling nearly 30,000 pounds of dino-shaped chicken nuggets due to the due to the potential for small metal pieces in the product. Specifically, the recall is for the 29-ounce plastic bag packages. The packaging includes a best-used-by date of September 2nd, 2024. The USDA says there has been one minor oral injury reported with the Nuggets. And Election Day is coming. Now, the Columbia County Fair continued on through this weekend. Here's some video of the fair that lit up at night even sooner thanks to us falling back an hour for daylight savings time fair will run until november 12th it's 25 dollars on the weekday and 30 on the weekend no backpacks were allowed inside the fairgrounds and those 17 and under must be accompanied by a parent your usual fair games are there and we caught up with two people taking in the fair and what they liked atmosphere you know good people and good vibes Love it. Again, the fair will run through this week and into next Sunday. Well, we are in the thick of politics season now, and early national poll reports are coming in. He will tell you the front runner coming up next. Overnight, we can expect lows to be right around 40, so chilly start to our Monday, but we'll warm up and see those 70s by the afternoon. I'll have a look at your forecast coming up. Call attorney John Foy and Associates. Well, back to earlier this evening, a festival for foodies was running well before the fire, and our Audrey Dickerver was there. Audrey, what was the energy like for people out there today? Craig, people were very excited to be out and enjoying the festivals. Organizers told me that they were originally expecting 30,000 people to be there, but just after the first two days, they think 100,000 people came out. Developers of Augusta are hoping to have more events like this in the future to help build up downtown. It's the biggest event they have had on Freedom Bridge so far. The crowds have been crazy out here. Um, I think the food trucks have drawn them in, but the bridge has brought them up here. People curious about the bridge. The Downtown Development Authority says the bridge is attracting new businesses and more people to this side of the city. In fact, there's already a restaurant under construction there, so it will attract businesses. It's called the halo effect. When you have something new, such as the bridge, the convention center, the Miller Theater, it's interesting to watch what goes on in the perimeter around it. You'll see buildings being purchased and new investment being made. And she says events like these are great exposure for Augusta. While you may not stay and shop, you're going to look and see all the great things that have opened up and say, hey, I need to come back downtown. Check out the new restaurants, check out the new stores. And they plan on having more events like this in the area. But we need to fill in the gaps. And this is the type of investment that the city has made that will attract new investment. Hoping that it helps build up downtown and bring in more people. I would say it's brought more business down in this area than has been in a long time. I think the marina has, you know, small things on the weekends, but it's nowhere near this. Kim Day, who came to Augusta from Aiken to sell on the go, also tells me that this is the biggest festival she has ever been a part of. And with 50 vendors around the bridge, that it has been consistently busy throughout the day. All right. Thanks for checking in over there, Audrey. I'm glad no one was hurt in that fire from earlier. Now, while there is still a ways to go, new polling suggests that now this year's Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, sadly in the country, has hit a high for the year at 73%. And now this year's Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade will feature some new characters, including fan favorites from other media. Some balloons include Beagle Scout Snoopy by Peanuts Worldwide, Blue Cat and Chugs by Cool Cats, and Poe from Kung Fu Panda, and Monkey D. Luffy from One Piece, along with many others. The newest balloons will take center stage during their outdoor test flights, which is held in preparation of the 97th Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. It runs from 8.30 to noon and features 25 balloons, 30 floats, 17 music talents, 
and nine marching bands. See, there's still some stuff to celebrate before Christmas. Now, a man in Chicago has set the new all-time record for eating stone crabs at a contest. Scott Milson took home first place in the crab eating contest, defeating 39 contestants yesterday. He cracked and clawed his way through 25 crab claws in 10 minutes and 17 seconds. The previous record was 10 minutes and 23 seconds. He said he entered the contest on a whim while on vacation. No experience professionally in any contest of eating um, and to be able to enjoy stone crab was just a bonus. He just went for it. Now, Keys Fisheries is the largest processor of stone crab claws in Florida. Stone crab harvest season runs October 15th to May 1st each year. Enough time to get more crabs for him. Well, coming up now that Halloween is over, where were the frights still first in the box office? We'll give you the box office top five estimates for this week coming up next. Kroger Gets Mom slash Gets the Sky for more details. Sponsored by Hobby Town Augusta. You're watching News 12 on your side. Well, with Halloween now just a spooky memory, could the big horror movie in theaters keep finding audiences to frighten? Well, David Daniel has the early weekend estimates for the top five films. Yeah, man. Si convierte su salón de clases en un patio de recreo, ¿qué va a hacer después? Radical, starring Eugenio Derbez, opened in fifth place on ticket sales of $2.7 million. Priscilla, about Priscilla Presley and her life with Elvis, made $5.1 million to debut number four. Killers of the Flower Moon stayed in third place, collecting another $7 million. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be called the Eras Tour. Yeah. Taylor Swift, the Eras Tour is up to 166 million domestic after a second place weekend worth 13 and a half million dollars. If you are watching this video, it means you've been selected as Freddy's newest security guard. A scary drop for Five Nights at Freddy's, which earned $19.4 million, down 76% from its debut, but still enough to stay number one. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Alrighty, a scary weekend for movies. Emily, we seen anything scary in the weather coming up here? Lots of people going to be outside for those polls coming up on Tuesday. I don't know about scary. Um, not my favorite, maybe. Some people, we're going to see the 80s again. And I'm just like, oh, come on. Let's not, let's not do that. But we're here. We're in that transition period, too, where things are just going back and forth. I, I was really enjoying this past week in the 70s, but can't have it all. So, we're going to see the 80s again. Uh, some people might enjoy that, though. So, happy for you. It's going to be cold, though. Overnight, that's going to be pretty consistent. The afternoon highs, relatively consistent, but just slowly starting to warm up into those 80s. Right now, sitting in those middle 40s, we'll cool off a few degrees overnight tonight, but uh, not much cooler than what we are currently seeing. So, to start off your Monday, we'll be... Right around 40. We'll warm up, though, pretty quickly by 8 a.m. That's actually when we used to hit our lows, but we're already going to see the sun for a little over an hour at this point. So we'll be in those 50s, topping off in those middle 70s for the afternoon. So another warm day in store for us. A little bit of cloud cover will move in for our Tuesday, but not going to do too much to those high temperatures there. We can still expect to see those upper 70s. But hey, patterns changing a little bit by the end of the week. I'm starting this time map late Thursday evening, just showing some possible rain later on in the overnight hours Friday, but really looking like uh, it's going to be a Saturday rain event for us. So uh, it doesn't go out too far just yet. So just know, hey, the forecast could change a little bit as we get closer to time. But looking like we're going to see some rain ahead of a cold front. Hey, we have a new segment here, bird watching forecast. And we can, it's just kind of a day planner of what you can expect tomorrow. Maybe you want to sit out and watch some birds. It's going to be a great day to do that. Really not expecting a whole lot of cloud cover. Maybe a few clouds later on in the afternoon. But overall, great start to our day. Again, starting off in the 40s. We'll reach those 70s by noon. Topping off right around 75, 76. So we'll cool off after sunset, which is around 5.32-ish. So I uh, did not love today. 
seeing the sun go down a little bit earlier, but you can't win them all, like I said. We'll see those 80s as early as Wednesday. Some spots could see 80 on Election Day. So be aware of that. It is going to be on the warmer side. Thursday still looking warm. Friday, not expecting any rainfall throughout the day, but that cloud cover is moving in ahead of that front that's going to cool us down. I mean, check out Saturday, 67. So we're, we're doing this flip-flop pattern again, Craig. Thursday, 81. Saturday, 67. And then check out Sunday, 61. So things are, are a roller coaster. That's the best word for it. You can say that again. I want to say it's fall, y'all, but these temperatures, it, it's all over the place. But coming up in sports, Taylor Heineke gets his first start for the Falcons, plus the Gamecocks try to sweep November. That's all new coming up next. And as we head into break, here's a live look at Dallas, your winning lotto numbers. Jim Hudson Automotive Group. On your sideline, sports brought to you by the Hawk Law Group. Earlier this week, the Falcons made another big switch, naming Taylor Heineke as the starter. They were hoping he would recreate some of that second half magic that we saw last week, this time against the Vikings. It all came down to the fourth quarter. Vikings hit a field goal to set them up 3, 24 to 21. Tyler Algiers five yard run gave the Dirty Birds a lead with two minutes left in the game. But like Lee Corso says, not so fast, my friend. Josh Dobbs, who hasn't had time to learn his teammates' names yet, probably won't have to introduce himself anytime soon. Another one bites the dust, this time to a quarterback who was just introduced to the playbook five days ago. We just not hitting our keys um, collectively. Um, you know, we come in here and, you know, we pride ourselves on, on putting in the work, and we do, man. Um, we come in and we, we work every day and try to improve and try to get better. Um, it just hasn't been going our way. Um, and, and those keys, you know, scoring in the red zone and taking care of the football, and we aren't doing enough uh, as a unit, and myself included. Everybody has to hold each other accountable, and we can't, you know, be the, be the guys to, you know, get our head down there, oh, it's okay, you know, we, we can't do that no more. Another big note from today is that despite Taylor Heineke's performance, Smith isn't locked in on the veteran as the starter. Heineke finished with 21 for 38, one touchdown, one interception, 20 rushing yards. The Panthers trailed the Colts by 10 in the third quarter, 20 to 10. They had a chance to cut it down even more, but a brick wall in the form of Kenny Moore stopped any momentum the Panthers were picking up. That's number two, 66 yards to seal the deal. Moore became the first in Colts history to have two picks in the game, first NFL player since 2021. It was really over before it even began. Indy kept the Panthers to 62 yards in the first half, sacked Young four times. That's 26 in his seven starts. The Gamecocks ended the drought after losing the previous four games. Shane Beamer's squad looked a lot like what we saw this time last year, somewhat put together in their 38-28 win. The defense gave up more than 400 yards, just over 200 of that rushing. But they did keep Jack State to just 14 on eight first-half drives. It was far from a pretty win, but a win just the same. We're going to enjoy it and, and celebrate it because these guys do work so hard. And I get it. There's sort of a minute ago, there's going to be people that, you know, don't want to celebrate victories. And and this game is too hard. And these guys work too hard. They work 353 days a year for basically 12 opportunities. So when we're successful because of the work that we put in during the week, yeah, it may be ugly. And, and uh, we had to find a way to win it in the fourth quarter, but we're going to celebrate it. Heading into Vandy Week, the Gamecocks could be without running back D.K. Joyner and still without tight end Trey Knox. Joyner left Saturday's game with a lower body injury and didn't return Trey Knox, still recovering from a hamstring injury. Okay, Jeff, before we go, Man, take a look at this. The Texans zero. running back makes the 29-yard field goal late in the game against Tampa Bay. That's the first time in almost 20 years that a non-kicker has made a field goal in the regular season, then. That's pretty cool. I like it. That's all I got. I'm not a sports person. I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> didn't see any rainfall today. Not expecting any rainfall for the next couple of days. So, hey, let's check in Studio B with Nick and Opic and Neil. Let's check on Law Call.
We've been called worse, Emily. Don't worry. Uh, hey, but tonight, uh, you can ask us anything. Yes, and we're going to talk to you about a young lawyer's experience in some of his first cases. And uh, we apparently there's a recent commercial about getting money fast. We're not going there. Okay. <laughs> Call us at 844-706-1212. We'll get started in a few minutes. When I need a pair of running shoes for several weeks, ask about Raylar and learn how Abvi could help you save. One more story before we go. A man was spotted juggling while running the New York City Marathon today. This footage from Christina Casillo shows the runner juggling four balls while making his way along Lafayette Avenue in Brooklyn. Jogglers, people who run and juggle at the same time, are not new to the marathon, according to the New York Roadrunners. 2020, a 75-year-old man became the oldest to do so at the race. So I guess that's the key. If you know you're not going to win or finish with a good time, you got you to get a gimmick or trick going for yeah, the it's like I couldn't, do, I couldn't do either. So no. he's running a marathon and juggling. I hate running. Same. I hate yeah. running. There's no yeah, way. I'd have to probably be a, a, a joggler, I believe it's called. But um, oh, okay. <laughs> we went joggling through this weather, though, you know? I hear uh, all these ups and downs. Yes. Um, <laughs> we're going to be seeing the 80s again. But we'll get back to the 60s by next weekend. Going to see some rain possible Saturday, though. So uh, hopefully forecast will change, but that's what it's looking like right now, Craig. Well, thanks for that, Emily. Thank you for joining us here on News 1211. Be sure to join our guys at Law Call coming up right after this.